Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Makey Blog Podcast brought to you by <laughs> Makey Travels, which makes vacations for wonderful families all over the globe. We'll get into more about our primary sponsor later, but my name is Jared alongside Christy and Jesse. How are you both doing today? Um, good in the Christmas spirit, that's for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. It's that yeah, yes. week. Merry Christmas. Right. Um, I'm good. I'm cold. I have been in like really warm spirit yeah. jerseys. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like 40s and 50s in Florida, and mm -hmm. this Florida girl just doesn't know how to handle it. <laughs> yeah, people are people are freaking out here at Walt Disney World. I was at Hollywood yeah. Studios today, Magic Kingdom yesterday, both days. Uh, I saw a lot of winter jackets. So <laughs> yeah. that, that time of year. Uh, but yes, so welcome to another episode. We're very excited. We're going to be covering lots of stuff today. Uh, first off, we're going to do plenty of Disney news, including Avatar officially opening. Yeah. Um, you know, some character dining returning to Walt yeah. Disney World. Tokyo Disneyland is banning reselling. Um, Bob Weiss retires really? after 40 yeah. years with the company. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very infamous Imagineer here at Walt Disney and uh, we'll get into our favorite times to visit Walt Disney World. We're going to do a little ranking system. So it's going to be a fun episode. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, if you are new to this podcast, welcome. Yes. So let's jump right into it with our Disney news, which we try to cover this in a segment that takes about 15 to 20 minutes. But we're going to cover the biggest Disney headlines of the week. And uh, jumping right into it, Avatar has officially hit theaters everywhere. It mm -hmm, opened yep. up with a opening weekend of $441 million, Crazy. which is good for the 11th biggest opening in the history of yep. movies. So that's pretty crazy. successful. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, have either of you guys <laughs> watched it? Do you have plans to watch it? Um, I do have plans. I haven't seen the second one, of course, but the first one several times. So we do have plans to go see it. Uh, it's my husband's birthday on Friday, so hopefully we'll get to the movie for that. Awesome. There you go. That would be awesome. Yeah, I definitely want to see it. It'll probably be more in January. I'm going to wait till after all the holiday craziness. Um, but I did read your review, and it yes. sounds amazing. And I watched yeah. your little video, too, which I was like, oh, my God, thank God for no spoilers, because I don't want to see spoilers, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was really cool to be like, yes, I can actually listen to something that doesn't spoil anything. So um, yeah. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, a little background on that. I did write a uh, formal non-spoiler review for Avatar The Way of Water. If you guys want to yeah. check that out, it's over on the blog. And um, I also put together a video, uh, just myself speaking for about 13 to 14 minutes on our YouTube channel, if you want to check that out, which is also a non-spoiler review. But I personally really, really love the film. Um, I thought it was mind blowing to watch in theaters and I think it's going to be a massive success. It, it's really interesting though. And I do think we should talk about this briefly, how there's been lots of mixed reactions, not about the movie, but about the outlook when it comes to the company, because yeah. uh, we saw stock was down uh, come Monday with mm -hmm. some pundits on CNN and, and certain members of the of the you know Wall Street world talking about how they thought the film underperformed at the box office. Which imagine that eleventh biggest opening <laughs> like, in the world history of film. Living in where that underperforms, it's crazy, right? It's incredible, yeah. and I and I understand the film is one of the more expensive films of all time, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's just no way you can convince no. me. Four hundred and forty-one million dollars is no. is not a good opening. <laughs> so oh, that's yeah. just so, insane. Yeah. It's crazy how the whole movie theater situation definitely COVID threw a wrench in that with how people see movies. Oh, yeah. And in a way, it's been great, um, especially when we we were home for so long with streaming. But that definitely affected the movie theaters. But what I think is interesting is I feel like they don't take that into account, that, that this whole upside down happened with the industry. And yeah. they haven't adjusted what they expect, like, box office explosions to be. So, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm that person now that I'm like, oh, I'll just wait till it comes out yes. on Disney Plus. Like, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So um, I think it's interesting too because you know, obviously there was a lot of hype from a box office perspective mm -hmm. with this yeah. film, but you know, the opening weekend doesn't tell the full picture with a right. film. For example, Top Gun Maverick is the highest-grossing film of the year. Now that film opened up actually 
less than this film opened up opening yeah. weekend. Right. So, so the point is, is that there's two types of big films. There's the must see, you have to go see it opening mm -hmm. weekend film. That's usually the big Marvel films. Those are of like, course. you'll yeah. get the film spoiled of if you course. don't see it opening weekend. Right. And Avatar isn't that kind of movie. It's going to play for months and continue yeah. to make money for months, yes. just like the first Avatar did, just like Titanic did. Yeah. James Cameron is very famous for these films that they stay in cinemas these for months. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't think there's anything for them to be concerned about. It's already hit as of Tuesday. We're recording this uh, December 20th. It's already hit $500 million oh my worldwide. Gosh. And frankly, I just from everything that I've read and everything I've looked into it, I can see it hitting somewhere between yeah. $1.5 to $2 billion by the time it's fully yeah. done. Yeah. Which and, and just like you were saying, you're going to probably go after the holiday craze. Yeah. So Probably a lot of people who are just waiting for that week between Christmas. I call it the week where like nobody knows what's going on in the world because you're There's just so much stuff. <laughs> so yeah. I guarantee you that week it's we're gonna see numbers shoot up for sure. Yeah, yeah and that's it's... the thing. Like I for one, I don't have time to go yeah. and watch it before Christmas. If I did, I'd be sitting there doing and... my to do list in my head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like I can't enjoy it. Like I actually yeah. want to be there and be in the moment and actually enjoy it. Like Jared got to. Like that sounds mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. And Jared, you saw it in three D, right? Yeah, I saw it in IMAX 3D, Amazing. which is another thing too. So uh, this was the second biggest IMAX opening wow. of all time. That's crazy. Uh, wow. And so yeah. another reason why it didn't have a ton of money opening weekend is all the IMAX screens were sold out everywhere, and people wow. would rather wow. wait. People mm -hmm. would rather wait to watch it in IMAX and yes, in 3D. Because it's an so. experience. Exactly. So it's right. going to continue to make money in IMAX and 3D continuously. Yeah. But yeah. Moving on here, there's two big openings going on, uh, in fact, over at Walt Disney World in terms of dining. Uh, first yes. of all, February 28th, we're going to see the return of character dining at Cinderella's Royal Table. Very exciting. Yay. Up in the castle. Mm -hmm. And then also on March 1st, which was uh, some more recent news, we're seeing buffets fully return to Chef yeah. Mickey's over at Contemporary. So yeah. what are your guys' thoughts on these two? Um, and uh, and yeah, this is this is exciting news, obviously, for it, Disney it fans. Is. Um, it's interesting, though, because I feel like we, not that the, we're anywhere back to normal before COVID, but it's been yeah. so long that I forget that there's still some things that have to return or are returning to the park. Yeah. So when news like this happens today, Mickey Blog uh, shared the news, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even I realize <laughs> Yes. So, and I think it's a great news coming from like a family perspective. If um, I know we've really missed those character dining experiences because it was like one shop, we got to eat great food and we got to see the characters. And so that we were, we could just enjoy the uh, rides in the park. Yeah. So from a family aspect, I'm super happy that character dining is especially chef Mickey's, which I know a lot of people are not like, it's mm. always 50, 50 on chef Mickey's. We love it because I mean, the food, it's the classic characters. Like, there's nowhere yeah. else where you can get the, all those characters in. So, I'm excited. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm super excited for Cinderella's Royal Table, only because last time I went, you walk in, you see Cinderella real quick, and then you go upstairs and you eat. And right. that's it. And you're like, wait, where are the princesses? So, it felt bare without the princesses, like, walking around at the tables. Well, not know. to mention, I mean, the pricing was... The same. The so, same. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just right. tell it how it is real yeah. quick. It, it's yeah. going to be better with, it's going to yeah. be better bang for your buck and, and more exciting yeah. from a family perspective and yeah. from a, a guest on vacation to have those characters there. Characters in yeah. general, you know, as we've seen across Walt Disney World and Disneyland and, and all over the world with characters slowly returning because of COVID, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. some came back quicker than others. And but the point is, is that with each one, it, it's like another step back towards, yes, you know, I normalcy. Know. Piece and of the puzzle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it means a lot to families. It means a lot to mm -hmm. guests because you want to have the full experience. I mean, yeah. people, as cool as it is, obviously, to dine within the castle, you know, people pay for character mm -hmm. dining experiences yeah, to yeah. see those characters. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it just adds an extra layer. And obviously Cinderella's table is, is sort of unique in itself without characters because you're eating in, in the, the castle. castle. <laughs> yeah. But regardless, it's just an extra thing. And I think it's great. Both of them obviously are great. And buffets returning, that's another thing that is just more I know, closer to normalcy, you know? Right. 
Yeah, so, now, Christy, as a mom, like with yeah. your kids, say it's just, just you and your kids. How do you handle a buffet? Like, do you bring the kids with you? <laughs> um, well, I do. I, fortunately, it's only been me with just two boys at the time, and I have three. Yeah. It only once, and I did bring them with me, and that was like when they wanted to be attached to me and like listen to everything I said. Which yeah wouldn't work now yeah. but um no I always wonder I actually always wonder how single parents do it as, yeah. I, as I'm watching my husband fold the stroller and carry it on the bus yeah I'm like how do single parents do that with you kids more hands. so um no I haven't done that but I'm really happy you know going back to like getting all the characters in and a great meal it's there's so much that we often like complain about gripe about with the cost of things at Disney but as a family that goes knowing like that is one place where we would put our money and we try to do at least right. one character dining experience per trip because like you get them all in and it's just, you're guaranteed a picture with those characters. And like I said, Chef Mickey, it's like the fat five. So that is like one piece. I always say, if you're going to skimp anywhere, don't skimp on like one character dining meal. Yeah. So when I went to, with Tusker reopening to buffet, <laughs> it has all the characters in the buffet when it was, you know, they would bring you the, the food and it was more family style. And my server actually mentioned that he was like, oh, I don't know how it's going to be with the buffet coming back versus the family style because everyone has very different opinions about it. Yeah. And personally, I like either one. I don't have a preference of either one, but I know sometimes parents do or younger generation right. does or older generation you know, does. The younger kids like, and I love how Disney always does, um, I eat off them myself the kid yeah. buffets like yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they have a great kid size buffet it's so perfect park fair, which park fair i wish would come back yes. um yeah so they my kids love it because they feel like it's a great experience for them they walk up and it's their awesome. height so yeah it's cool yeah, because like I said, I love the experience too. I think it's great. Like you can get to pick and choose what you want. Yeah. Or like family style, I always feel like I'm wasting something and I don't like wasting food. Right. Um, so when it comes to that, I was like, oh, I think I'd rather do buffet because I know what I can eat, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Jared? So I, I mean, I tend to agree, but at the same time, nobody properly fills their plate at a buffet. I have <laughs> well, to break you off there, Jesse. No. Nobody, you get, nobody you in the history of a buffet. Yeah. Okay. I get it. But <laughs> nobody goes up with a plate and just like properly I plates do. the right. I mean, my husband does it. You know, I, he gets mad at me because I go up, I'm a salad person and I like fill my plate with salad first and he's like embarrassed, but my well, husband gets his money's worth. Well, when my family goes to Boma, my stepdad, it's like a science. Like he goes yeah. up, he does all the soups and then he does the salads and then he does like some meats and starches. Like it's yeah. it's like a it's actual Oklahoma. game. Yeah. So it's it's no joke. But yeah. Moving on right. to our next Disney headline of the week. Uh, Tokyo Disney is officially banning reselling. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually coming out the heels of some of the Asia, um, you know, Disney parks already having some banning and and rules placed within um, the parks in regards to vlogging and filming and some YouTube stuff. So this is a, this is a new one in terms of fully banning that. Um, I mean, just right off the bat, obviously a pretty big deal, but, but is this something that you guys think could eventually hit the, uh, the States in terms of the parks over here and, and, and really how do, how do you even enforce that? I like was going to say, how is know? that even enforced? So let me yeah. ask you real quick. So how, and I don't know the exact name, but there's like, um, companies and Instagram accounts. There's one big one that like, you can buy product from the overseas park, which always happens to be like amazing pro even their popcorn buckets are mm -hmm. more yeah. like awesome. Incredible. So yeah. how do those, how are those operations going to work now? Cause they're, they're kind not. of like personal <laughs> shopper, right? So how are they going to enforce that? I, I mean, it's just interesting to see. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they enforce it. Um, and then going from there, we'll see if that's even like in the future here. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's something potentially they could bring to the U S yeah. but again, it's back to that enforcement. How are you going to enforce that? Like I know when I buy merchandise, I'm keeping it. It's mine, but say I say I get three sizes too big and my extra small shirt doesn't fit me anymore. Does that count as reselling? Right. And you, right. Or so, like I had you get the popcorn bucket. Like technically, how would they even know? I, like, it's weird. Are they going to uh, watch your demo also? Like what's so, going on? Yeah. How would they enforce that? I really don't well, know. Well, I think it's, I think it's much more simple than, than you guys are, are thinking. Maybe. And it, I think, so, so put it, yeah. so like, 
I don't think from a widespread issue, they're going to be able to enforce the everyday person who's selling yeah. a few items on eBay. But there are Instagram pages, there are websites that are fully dedicated to yeah. reselling. And those are the pages I think Disney wants to to put an end to because yeah. Yeah. they're not just reselling these items, they're reselling them at a pretty high markup. And, yeah. and you know, it, the parks and and these places have every right to to shut that down. So, yes. so I think you know we're going to see that obviously being shut down at Tokyo. But it's just going to be interesting yeah. to see one how they implement that into where that goes eventually when it comes mm. to the state yeah. side. So, yeah. I so think yeah, first they should start. They're going to even think about that here. I think they should first start enforcing like one or two items per customer um mm -hmm. jared even when I, you i had you get the vans for me that time it was like 10 per guest like that yeah. like nobody is buying ten shoes for them of the same show so oh. i think they could start with enforcing the one or two maybe three per guest and go from yeah. there yeah and like yeah. one or two per guest i mean say i'm buying two one for me one for jake like my fiance right. and it's like that's the thing like yeah i'm buying two because there's two of us yeah. but I mean, in general, like how many you see are they going to buy? People walking out of the parks with the bags, like, yeah. come on. Yeah, I think one of the better things that the parks had happened during the COVID two era was the two per person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and even though it was two per person per size, yeah. I understand lots of people would still get too small, too medium, too large, too extra large. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yes, resellers would still do what they can, but even with that in mind, it's still a better situation for yes. guests i mean yes. how many guests come to a park and just they're they're dying to just get that one item and yeah. because mm -hmm. you know susie sell a lot over here yeah, needs to sell 15 mugs you yeah. know marked up at 300 percent right. then yeah. it, it ruins it for that guest and for me as a disney parks reporter and someone who's in the parks multiple days a week and I mean, probably 200 days a year. Like when I think about that every day that I go to a Disney park, like I was today or like I was yesterday, yeah. what's at the forefront of my mind, almost 90% of the time, mm -hmm. what makes my job worthwhile is thinking about how many people are in the park at the same time as me for their first trip yes. you know? or how many children have never seen something like this yes. before. And so when when it starts feeling like, okay, wow, I come here a lot, like I'm very blessed, you have to remind yourself of that stuff because mm -hmm. I work in a field where people are experiencing this stuff for maybe once a year, maybe yeah. once every few years, right, maybe right. once ever. So it's just not fair to those guests specifically mm -hmm. in my in my opinion. And that's why I think yeah. the reselling does need to be to be really Address, looked at. Yeah. I think so too. I mean, I think they could stop it to a point like on eBay, for example, because that is like the biggest markup area for resellers. Right. Mm -hmm. Where with like the personal Instagrams, like I don't know if it would count towards like personal shoppers because not yeah. all personal shoppers are marking the price up. They're just shopping and shipping. Right. They're charging for shipping. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I don't know, but it'll be interesting to actually see how that plays. We can it also is interesting. Do our part, and people can also not purchase from the eBay. I mean, if it's a, if it's ten dollars more, or whatever. But there's things that are hundreds of dollars more, and no matter how bad you want that, like let's do our part also. You know, my best friend yeah. bought a figment popcorn bucket for ninety five dollars. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't know. And the thing is, is on the flip side, just to play devil's advocate here, if people want to buy that and it is available, the person has every right to do so. Yes, true. But, of course. I mean, it's just like collectors, any other person who wants to collect. If there's someone out there who collects popcorn buckets and Figment mm -hmm. is their favorite character, yeah. then yeah. that's what they want to buy. And, you know, it's right. no different from someone wanting to buy that rare baseball card for $500, you know, so... So, yeah, I also but, wonder too if it's Disney. Also, the way they they'll build up like this new popcorn bucket coming out. Like, what was the Christmas one where it, the music box? You turn. Yeah, I, I love it. Music box. Too. A lot of their content is building that stuff up, and it creates like think of Splash Mountain when they announced during COVID, Splash Mountain was closing, and everybody ransacked that Briar Patch gift shop. Like, it just was madness. So I think Gone. to the hype of these things, yeah, could relax a little bit. Yeah, I think there's 
you know, there's there's plenty we could talk about. Every day there's a new popcorn bucket, people. It's true. <laughs> it's but, like uh, you're not going to miss anything. I know. But before we move on to our big topic of the episode in terms of our favorite times to visit Walt Disney World, we should mention that Bob Weiss is retiring mm-hmm. as uh, president of Disney Imagineering. He has been an Imagineer and with the company since 1980. That's crazy. Uh, and has yeah. been heavily involved with lots of Disney projects, most notably MGM and uh, the construction of that now known as Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we actually, a few episodes ago, had the chance to interview two former Disney Imagineers. Yeah. um, One, Joe Lancicero, uh, who uh, headed a lot of worldwide projects. (laughs) And, uh, you know, Joe, you know, he was awesome to talk to. So was... um, you know, so was, uh, God, what was it? I'm Ryan, sorry. Was it Ryan, Ryan, yes, Ryan yeah. Harmon, Ryan Harmon, yeah. another, yeah. another amazing guest, but speaking to both Ryan and Joe was, was fantastic. And, yeah. and now getting this news about Bob, uh, also a few years back, knowing that Joe Rody left, it feels like there's a big collection of really mm-hmm. all time, great Imagineers now that are, uh, that are no longer going to be at the Walt Disney company. Yeah, so, so big me. news for sure. And and I put this on my LinkedIn, and it's interesting because um, Joe actually commented. um, I made the comment that as great as, like, Zach Ridley and all these Imagineers are, you get the sense that we're losing so many of the great ones with Joe Rohde and Tony Baxter and all these guys. And it's like – it's almost like when you graduate high school and then you, for a while, you know, the people still there and then all of a sudden you don't. And I feel like we don't know this like class of Imagineers that's there now, except like Zach Ridley, cause he's on Instagram all the time. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, it's, it's interesting to see. And I know they're just as creative as the guys we know and love and grew up with, but that's also part of our Disney's nostalgia, the nineties, Joe Rohde, Tony Baxter. So of course, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, sad. it's almost like the end of an era. It is, but yeah. on the flip side of that, I mean, there's fresh new faces coming in. Yes. Hopefully, we're going to love them. They're going to make some amazing things. We just mm-hmm. we need them to announce themselves a little more so that we know who they are. Agreed. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, especially with a company like this, it, it's I think the reason so many Disney fans get so invested with executives here mm-hmm. is, you know, Walt himself and even Roy to a certain extent, uh, they were not your average like executives. I mean, yeah. they were very, very involved and, and involved in the sense where Walt was visiting Disneyland, you know, and walking around and, and, you know, so, so I think fans put these executives more up on a pedestal than let's say, you know, Verizon thinks right. about their CEO yeah. right. because it's not the same. It's no. more of a creative type of company coming from the all time creative here with mm-hmm. Walt. So, so Imagineers are sort of an extension of that where the yeah. fans kind of look up to them as if they're almost like celebrities. So, of course. so it, Zach Ridley is, is one of those who does an amazing job at that about, yeah. you know, interacting with fans and posting on his social media. And I, I actually hear what Jesse just mentioned. And, and I think it's a good point. I do think Imagineers could, could maybe, uh, interact more and, and make themselves yes. more known. So especially yeah. this new generation of Imagineers so that mm-hmm. fans can start getting attached to that new generation because of it's course. always, it's right. always hard, you know, to say goodbye to the old and say hello to the new. It's yeah, just always. It's right, right. hard no matter what. Yeah. You know, so, so definitely congratulations to Bob Weiss and thank you for many, many memories and yes, many, many, many projects and, uh, you know, a lot that we owe. But before we jump into the second half of our episode, I did want to mention that, as I always like to mention, the Mickey mm-hmm. Blog Podcast is sponsored by Mickey Travels. And Mickey Travels is a nationally recognized leader in Disney vacation planning. So if you need help planning a Disney vacation, definitely listen up here. They are platinum earmarked by Disney and their services are always 100% free. Reach out to Mickey Travels today for a free quote on your Disney vacation at mickeytravels.com. That's mickeytravels.com, making magic one vacation at a time. This is holiday week, folks, and uh, Disney is busy. And let me tell you, it's always fascinating visiting Walt Disney World during the busiest times of year. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, and the reason I'm mentioning all this is because we're about to talk about our favorite times of year to visit Mm -hmm. Walt Disney World. But 
you know, it's always fascinating being here and seeing how busy it is and seeing everybody because you see that look of just panic. And I can't <laughs> even tell you how many people I see on a regular basis that I truly believe like, hmm, I wonder if they used a Disney travel agent because yeah. it's yeah. something that, yes, we promote on this podcast. And yes, they are a primary sponsor and everything. But it is one of those things where like, I'm not promoting like, gum to you guys here. Yeah. Like, you know, like this is not yeah. just a product you find on the shelf. This is something that I fully believe in, have seen firsthand mm -hmm. to really yeah. change I've used your trips. Hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people forget too, that like when you book a trip, it's, you think that you're done. And I've had experiences where I've been on our vacation and I reach out to our agent and cause I can't, not that I can't, but I, it's my vacation and I have to be on hold with Disney for something or reservation. It could be yeah. hours. And there's been times where my travel agent will, will do that for me and make that call. So once you're there, it's almost like they're your a, a concierge almost and they're, yeah. they're still there to help you as that safety net. So it doesn't stop once you book the vacation with them, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, they're awesome. So definitely go check them out at makeytravels.com If you need a vacation planner and help planning your Disney trip, which thankfully Disney's not that complicated. So I'm sure you could do it on your own. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah. let's move on here. So this is going to be very exciting. The second half of our episode is going to be fully focused on our absolute three favorite or best okay. times, in our opinion, times to visit Walt Disney World. So we're going to start with our third ranking, each of us, and we're going to go all the way up to one. But we're going to explain why. We're going to talk about the reasonings behind that pick and why we just believe fully that you should go visit Walt Disney World um, during that specific time of year. So Christy, we'll start with you okay. with your number third option. Uh, if you were to tell someone to go visit Walt Disney World and you had a top three times, what would be mm -hmm. that third pick and why? Okay, so my third pick is, um, and I don't know if it's still, I feel like there's no not busy time ever, um, but I always loved going, I've gone three times, a few days after New Year's Day. So like January 7th or January, whatever the weekend is after New Year's Day, we have gone and it's been like dropped off because there's all the massive crowd that from Thanksgiving on exits and it's, believe it or not, it's a great time to go. Like some of the decorations are still up. Usually they're mostly down, um, but it's like, it's almost like a new, a refresh and it's the new year and it's not as crowded as most times. So right after the first of the year within that first week, I've, I've in fact, I don't even like talking about it a lot because I don't want people to go at <laughs> that time. Always. But that's my third pick is that first week of the new year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jesse, what about yourself? Yeah, so my third pick is going to be actually like that first or second week in November. So right before the crowd, actually. So yours is after, mine's before. Yep. I like that before time because you do get those holiday decorations. Mm -hmm. And that's my Christmas without the crowds. So you really get mm -hmm. to go enjoy the decorations, enjoy all the lights, enjoy those Christmas trees without running into 10,000 people and having to wait in an hour long line to get a burger. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's definitely, you know, my time that I, for you know, number three, that I would go just to see those Christmas decorations and a little, you know, a little more easy, a little more relaxed than with all the hype with the actual holidays. So uh, that's on my list, Jesse, but it's not yeah. number three. It's higher than that. <laughs> so uh, I'll get into that because I totally agree with what you were just saying. Yeah. Um, Early January, just to speak about what Christy was just saying too, is uh, Festival of the Arts begins mm -hmm. in early January, which yeah. many people just, it's Please criminally, it's criminally underrated. And I love it. It's such a wonderful festival that Epcot's put, Epcot puts together. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's just a little extra point there. But yes. for me, uh, my number three, at least, is uh, September and not just really you know, peak September. For me, it's like that first, mm. maybe second week of September. That's my the number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured we were going to have some crossover yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, the sure. reason, I, the, there's a few reasons, but for me, uh, one of the best kept secrets here when it comes to visiting Disney, one is go those like last two weeks of August. Mm -hmm. You would not believe how little crowds are at Disney. Yeah. I mean, it was so many people starting school and everything mm -hmm. like that. It's, I mean, literally uh, this past 
August, I walked on Flight of Passage, got off, and the lady said, do you want to go again? And I just stayed on the bike. I've never yeah. seen that or heard of that <laughs> ever again. Right, right. So it's it's incredible. But the reason I'm saying September is, yes, there's going to be a little bit more crowds that first, second week of September, but there's a lot more going on. So you got yep. Food and Wine Festival hitting more full swing. It's not quite as hot as August, starting mm -hmm. to cool off. Not really, but starting at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. You got so Fair you got all. food and wine, and on top of that, for all you Halloween fans, like I know you both are, that's yeah. Halloween is officially in full swing. So you can yeah. go to the Magic mm -hmm. Kingdom. You can do not so scary, but similar to what Jesse was saying about Christmas in November, you can do not so scary. You can do all that without having to be there in like late October, which is mm -hmm. when the Halloween crowds yeah. are much bigger. Yes. So so for me, you get several different you know, key elements here in terms of some reduced crowd situations, you know, weather is hot, but not completely unbearable mm -hmm. like July and August. You got yep. food and wine festival. Right. There's just a lot of good stuff going on all at once. So I think that's a really solid time. If I was a bigger Halloween fan, like you guys were, maybe that would be higher on my list. Yeah. Yeah. But frankly, I don't care that much about Halloween. <laughs> so uh, I figured we were going to have some debates on the whole Halloween topic oh, yeah. on this episode. That could be a whole episode but in itself. It, it really oh, yeah. could. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's my take. Um, but what is everybody's number two? Let's move on to our number two. Christy, what yep. is your number two? Well, since you brought up Halloween, um, so I obviously <laughs> love Halloween time at the parks, but now, okay. So this might be a little controversial because there are crowds there. So I love going at the end of October, it requires planning because if you want that like October 31st or 30th, not so scary, you have to plan that out. But I love it because you potentially, if you stay the 30th or 31st of October, you have the potential of also extending it into November a few days and getting Halloween and Christmas decorations. So it's mm -hmm. like a bonus, yeah. it's like two for one. You get, you know, you might not have the whole experience of the Christmas party, but Disney is so magical with like, of course, the Christmas party is amazing, but Christmas is everywhere at, at Walt Disney World Resort. So if you go those last few days of October, do Halloween, and then you get like the first few days in November of Christmas, it's magical. So it's a little more crowded, but um, definitely BOGO those. Wow, yeah, that's a really good one. I've never yeah. even thought of that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but it, that's, you know, that's me being like, oh, God, no, it's busy. Like, I'm not going. <laughs> But if you're trying to get like the most bang for your buck, yeah. you know, like, and it's not have those holidays, you only go to Disney a few times every other year, or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 So, no, I, so what's I interesting it. about that is, uh, you know, that feels like just living your own nightmare before Christmas yeah, scenario. True. Like you Absolutely. can't decide <laughs> if you really package. love. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get you get a little <laughs> bit of Halloween, a little yeah. bit of Christmas. <laughs> um, obviously, the first. Uh, very merry party doesn't usually start until November eighth, right. so yeah. you won't you wouldn't necessarily catch both parties. But Christie's right in the sense where overnight Halloween night they flip those decorations. Oh, yeah. But Jesse, what about you? What's your number two in terms so of my number two was your number three? So um, yeah, like mid September, like the second week in September, only yeah. because the parties are just starting. All those fall decorations are in. You have food and wine, and it's not like the end or the beginning it's kind of like almost in the middle like it's just it's more enjoyable and everything is kind of settled yeah. at that point so there's not a lot of crowds there's no kids on vacation right. um you know you do get to experience like not so scary without having to stand you know i can watch the parade without a wall of 10 people yes um mm -hmm. so it is less crowded but you know you still get that fall feeling even in september Yes, it's hot. It's Florida. <laughs> it's not October weather, but it is cooler than August. So I don't know. You get the best of both. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, there's a reason why I obviously am in agreement with you. I just feel yeah. like for me, when I was putting together my top three, you have to balance a lot of things here because absolutely. obviously you're talking about your favorite time period. Like it's easy to just be like Halloween or Christmas oh, yeah. or summer or spring or like 
but you have to factor in crowds. You have to mm -hmm. factor in the right yes. time of year. You have to of factor course. in weather. You have to factor in yeah. like it rains like a, a crazy rainstorm every day in the summer. Like you have oh, to yeah. factor in these, yeah, these things day. when it comes to Walt Disney World. So I, I totally agree, Jesse. But for me, my number two is early March. Okay. Uh, early March. And the reason I say early March is Flower and Garden Festival is amazing. Um, really, really love yes. it. But March is also arguably the best time of year in Orlando weather-wise. Yes. If you're yeah, trying yeah. to experience, you know, 70s and not a ton of rain and also not 99% humidity. Right. And, yeah. you know, for, for locals, for people who live in Florida, you'd be hard-pressed to meet a lot of people who won't tell you like, oh, I love March because of the weather. Mm -hmm. right. Um but beyond that, the crowds aren't crazy beginning of March, that first few weeks. And obviously things pick up as you get closer to spring break. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, just the start of Flower and Garden Festival, I also just argue is a really wonderful time of year. You know, it might have been a number three for me if I wasn't, you know, I'm not anti-Halloween, by the way, guys. <laughs> I just don't care as much about it as I do <laughs> I'm not, other I'm holidays. I'm anti-Christmas and it was I my know. number three. I know. Yeah, yeah, you are, Jesse. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Christmas tree, Christmas yeah. decor out of all of us. I yeah, have no. Christmas trees yeah. in the house. Okay, Leave me alone. okay. No, uh, <laughs> but but yeah. So for me, it's early March. I also, for me, also. Wow, I'm repeating myself. Uh, I think that Flower Garden Festival is my favorite festival in general. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I grew up and that was always my mom's favorite festival. Mm -hmm. The food's extremely underrated during Flower and Garden. Always. Um, yeah. For me, I don't love the food during uh, Festival of the Arts. I love the rest of Festival of the Arts, but I don't my love favorite, the food during Festival of the Arts. It's my favorite too. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is the beauty of opinions. Okay. This is beauty of opinions. I know. But I'm going to do a festival episode. It Jeez. looks, everything just looks painted in cute colors, but that doesn't mean it tastes good. Anyways, um, we're moving on. You get to, uh, you, it's <laughs> deconstructed and you get to put it together yourself. Why yeah. would I want a deconstructed yeah. dish of food? Be because it's artsy. But it's food, artsy. but food is constructed a certain way. Why that would I want you to deconstruct they it? Because they can play with their food. I was just going to say, don't you like to play with your food? Yeah. Like, as an no, adult, I like to eat my to. food. Isn't that yep. crazy? I like to eat my meal. I do both. I love yeah. the cookie oh. where you can paint with the icing. It's yes. like one of my favorites. I know. I love the rest of Festival of the Arts. Mm -hmm. I just don't love the food. Comparatively oh, okay. speaking right. to Flower right. and Garden, which in my opinion has really underrated, really great food <laughs> options. It does. And yeah. I love a lot of the florally like <laughs> ways they attribute things. Also, Flower and Garden, the topiaries are super, super cool. Yeah, Across so all pretty. of World Showcase, yeah. they're very cool. And in fact, you know, speaking as someone who's been working social media for several years, some <sighs> of the topiary posts are some of the bigger posts Beautiful. you'll see all year across very Disney true. pages. Yes. So, so yeah, I just, I, in general, I also grew up, that was my mom's favorite festival. So, you know, I just, I learned from the master. So I yeah. just always went and sort of, as I got older, started appreciating that. But beautiful time of year, Flower and Garden Festival. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, all the rest of the parks aren't overly crazy. Yeah. You're not never spending. You can actually spend 10 to 12 hours in a park without being like <gasps> from the heat yeah. or the exhaustion. Yeah. So there's just a lot of things going for that specific time of year. It might not be as magical as Halloween or Christmas, but I think it's a great time of year to visit. So, so it's okay. We're going to move into our number ones. We <laughs> had a on. brief, had a brief argument. We're moving on. <laughs> Fine. All right. So Christy, what's your number one, your absolute favorite time of year? Okay, so um, it's not fun for everyone else who doesn't participate in it, but I'm a big Run Disney person. So um, any Run Disney weekends, again, if you don't participate, you probably hate the runners because it's yeah. massive amounts of people. Um, but specifically Marathon Weekend, which is beginning of January, that is my favorite uh, race to be in. And just the vibe all around is amazing. So um being a part of Run Disney, like I could go on about, I'm obsessed with it. And it like breaks my heart that I haven't been able to get into a race because they fill up so quickly. Yeah. Even the charities have wait lists. I know. Um, so any Run Disney weekend, but the marathon one, that's the one that's been around the longest. It's got the most nostalgia to it. The medals always have the classic characters. Um, It's mm. just a great weekend altogether. And it's like, one big family like i you even the run disney announcers like you get to know them you feel like and it's just That's a cool vibe so 
Run Disney Marathon Weekend is my absolute most favorite time to be at Disney World. And sorry for all of you who don't run and were there picking up space. <laughs> okay, see, I'm not, I don't run. I am not uh -huh. a runner. I don't like running. But I will say, You're like when they released, I cannot run. <laughs> when they released the 90s marathon, I was like, it gets you. It gets I wanted to go so bad, but it sold out within like two because seconds. We're all going to run wine and dine this, this year, 2023. We're going to do a wine and dine race. Uh. You guys, I know we're doing it. No, I'm going to wine and dine at a slow pace <laughs> around yes. the showcase. And I'm going to wine and dine myself. The somewhere. most movement that I'm going to experience is between <laughs> each black table. Uh, and, and I'm going to, you know, yeah. that's that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, all right, on. Jesse, what about you? What's your number one uh, and my why? Number one. All right, so my number one is beginning of February. So it mm. is the, like, middle to end of Festival of the Arts, which is stunning, amazing, mm -hmm. my all-time favorite. There's deconstructed food. You get to paint yeah, a cookie. Yeah. So many yeah, fun things. Yeah, woo, deconstructed food. <laughs> I'm a big art person. If you can't tell by my wall behind me, I have so much art everywhere. Um, and I'm, I'm just an artsy person. So it's always super fun. Plus, the crowds are always really mellow. Mm -hmm. It is usually cold, um, like beginning of February. You know, typically what it is right now, actually. Like 50s to 60s degrees is kind of normal for February. Um, but also, it's you kind of feel the love. So it's closer to Valentine's Day. So you're like expecting a holiday, but not really. Um, it's just a nice in-between where there's not a whole bunch of crazy decorations. It's more Magic Kingdom and all of its magic. And it's just yeah. natural. Um, so yeah. it's one of those times that you really want to go, like, take pictures of the castle without decorations all over the place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just like the decorations and the aesthetic of just Disney in general, how they do it is just, it's just stunning to me without any decorations. Yeah. So that is yeah. my number one. I like it plain and simple. Yeah. Hey, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it sucks that you're wrong, but there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> our face with his food comment. He's coming at us. Clearly. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're just having some today. fun. Gosh. Just having some fun. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, the real number one is <laughs> middle of November. And I know Jesse already talked about it. She, yep. uh, for some reason, put it down at a lowly three. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, for me, it is the best time of year to visit Walt Disney World. So just in general, I just think Christmas is the mm -hmm. best at Disney. I understand uh, people's love for Not So Scary and that specific party. And I'm willing to even admit that Not So Scary is a more well-done party than it is. Very Merry. Yeah. Um, and I even said that to Jesse when we were at, because, you know, we've experienced I did a happy both dance. parties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we're going to it saying it. Yeah, right. In my defense, they took away the dream lights, okay? If it had the dream <laughs> lights, did. I wouldn't I even care. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, just for me, I think everybody should experience you know, Christmas at Disney, at least yes. once if you're going to yeah. do Walt Disney World. And mid-November is so amazing. Yeah. Early November, mid-November, mm -hmm. the first party starts November 8th. So for me, I would say around then, I just think that's such a great time of year to come down. I mean, yeah. one, the weather again is pretty great, but on top of that, you're getting to see Christmas and all of the holidays and all yeah. of its glory without having to deal with the actual holiday crowds, which yeah. let me tell you, this is recorded again during Christmas week. Mm -hmm. <sighs> wow. I mean, yeah. Walt Disney World during this week is wow. just yeah. bonkers. So, yeah. Yeah. so I just, I guess what I'm saying is between all the resorts that are just, they get decorated and they get decorated quickly. Usually the gingerbread houses are up by middle of November. I mean, mm -hmm. all of them are up by then. Uh, almost all the resorts are already fully decorated. Some of them might have some stuff that still needs to be put up, but just in general, I just think you can see all the decorations at the resorts. You can still go experience mm -hmm. the holidays at the parks. Uh, and at the same time, you're not feeling like, okay, I'm there during the holidays because everybody yeah. likes to be home for the holidays too, yeah. you know, and experience that by, you know, with their families and, and, Honestly, you don't want to be at Walt Disney World during no. the holiday week. Uh, and on the flip side, too, when you're not, like, living in Connecticut. So I prefer, when we do Christmas, I do prefer the first two weeks of the Christmas party in November because mentally in my mind as a mom and a planner, I don't, I want to come back and then start doing Christmas here. I don't want to. Yeah. 
start doing Christmas, be in the throes of it, pick up, go to Disney World, knowing what all I have to do, come, no. and then come home and pick right back up. So yeah. I do, no. when I do Christmas as a planner and traveling to Disney, definitely do the first two weeks in November. Yeah, yeah. it's way easier, way better. And honestly, just the crowds. The crowds are just so crazy God. right now. Yeah, and I'm really glad how we sort of framed this, by the way. It was on accident, but we framed it where I'll talk about my number one, which has to do with Christmas in mm -hmm. the middle of Christmas week. So just, yep. just great timing. Yep. But the Good point time. is here, folks, is, uh, you know, there's, there's really, I think, it, just to sort of, uh, you know, let us all ramble a little bit before we end this episode, I do think... And I think you guys would agree with this. There's no real right or wrong answer when it comes right. to this. You know, yeah. I think going back to what we talked about with Mickey Travels and having a Disney travel agent helps mm -hmm. with this sort of stuff because they can yeah. give you their expert advice. But yeah. when it comes to planning a Disney trip, it's about what what you want out of your trip and what makes right. it special for you. If yeah. you are someone who wants to be there during Christmas decorations, or if you are someone who doesn't care at all about the holidays, yeah. or if you're someone who says, I don't care if it's super, super busy, I want to be at the magic kingdom on Christmas day. No one's stopping wow. you here. All right. No like you, you. you do that. Mm -hmm. But, By all means. but the point is, is like, you know, I think it's, we, we do, and even in this episode, even though it's fully dedicated to this, I think Disney experts, Disney media, Disney travel agents, we all can help and try to give people the best advice that we can give, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's really what's best for you, you know? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. So, so before we wrap up here, do you guys have any honorable mentions? <laughs> Um, yeah. So you guys are going to think I'm crazy speaking of clouds, but I, and heat. Mm. So I don't mind the heat that much because we take lots of breaks and we do the pool like 90% of the time at the resort, but I do love 4th of July at Walt Disney World. Really? really? Despite the heat mm. and despite the crowds. Yes. There's, it's like the most patriotic place to be, I feel like. And before, I want to say early 90s, we would go there a few times with my family, and I specifically remember our, staying at the Contemporary, and our hotel room faced uh, the Magic Kingdom, and at any given moment, we were on our balcony, and there were just fireworks shooting off, like, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say, I don't know if it was, like, Discovery Island, but one of the islands in the middle of the lake had fireworks, the Magic Kingdom had fireworks, we could see Epcot in the distance, so mm. despite the heat and the clouds... Cool. Fourth of July is one of my favorite times. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'd probably say New Year's. So oh, the yeah, same Year's, reason. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm lucky. I currently in my apartment I can go to the pool and I can watch Disney fireworks. Nice. So this fourth of July I did that. And yeah, you're right. I mean it it's completely lit up the sky. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Um I also did it for New Year's last year and again, like stunning. I looked at my fiance and I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere. Can we just yeah. We're just going to stay at the pool and we're going to watch sky from the fireworks. You know, yeah, that, like, like yeah. you can be most places around Disney world. You don't have to even be in Disney world and mm -hmm. you can see the fireworks. So yeah. it's really, really cool to just be like, wow, those are Disney fireworks. And you can watch it from the comfort of either your home or a, you know, a restaurant or something yeah. where you don't have to be in the parks because like I said, in the parks on those days, it's like you have to be there super early, mm -hmm. make your reservation. That's a whole lot. That's a whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely stunning. So definitely an honorable mention for sure. Yeah. So personally, uh, I don't want to be anywhere near Walt <laughs> Disney World during New Year's. And it's yeah. nothing. I, I get what you're saying about the fireworks. but Same. I'm, so... I don't want to be near it. <laughs> In 2019, a quick story for you guys. I was actually supposed to meet my wife who, uh, at the time, girlfriend who was working at the Magic Kingdom. She was yeah. a cast member in Fantasyland. Uh, and she basically got extended because it was crazy there. And there were so many people on Walt Disney World property that yeah. she lost cell service. And oh, I was yeah. supposed to be meeting her at Disney Springs after she got out. But she got extended till 2 in the morning. So, but she could never tell me. So I'm just standing there at Disney Springs oh, alone, waiting for her. And Disney Springs is the busiest place on planet Mom. Earth. Yeah, trying to get an Uber out of there is like $150. So not yeah. trying to convince people to not go during New Year's, <laughs> but just personally, again, this is what we go back yeah. to. You know, like the, the whole point of this conversation, the whole point of this episode is, 
you know, we're giving you our opinions on our favorites, but it's about what works best for you. You know, if you're okay with crowds, great. If you're okay with summer heat, let's say you grew up in Texas and, you know, summer heat doesn't bother you, then by all means, tough it out in July or August or, or maybe none of this really matters because it's about, okay, when does it work for my family to actually go and forget about best time of year? That's really what's important. Getting work off, getting the kids out of school, being able to do it. Exactly. So yeah, maybe it's more busy during Christmas or maybe it's more busy during that week in April, but you you just go because that's the time off you have, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I just think that guests and whoever's listening to this episode, if you're trying to figure out what's the best time of year to come, definitely, of course, I hope we helped you with that in terms of our advice. I hope but so. Obviously, do what's best for you and your family, and, and yeah. only you guys know that. But right. Right. don't go during New Year's. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> Halloween. Yeah, but Christmas is the best. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So do you guys have anything else to talk about or say on the matter? I no. So. I mean, I have a lot to say, Jared, but I'll, I'll wait until another episode. We'll yeah. wait until we can discuss other, yeah. other terms. Yeah. We'll put a pin in that one. Yeah. Totally, totally fair. All right. Uh, well, moving forward, uh, we just want to say, as we always do before we wrap up this episode, that thank you all so much for your support. Yes, if you like this episode, you. please give us a good rating, especially on um, platforms like Apple Podcasts or mm-hmm. Spotify, giving five-star ratings or even four stars if you, you like yeah. Jesse and Christy, but you don't like Jared, whatever. Uh, just <laughs> those like high... constructive food. <laughs> Yeah, yes. those those high ratings mean a great deal to push our podcast out to uh, more of the general public. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely share it with any family or friends if you think they'll enjoy it. And you can check us out. Obviously, MickeyBlog.com is where yeah. our home is. That's where we write articles every single day, constantly, 24-7, keeping the general public updated on all things Disney. But you can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that fun jazz. And uh for all things Disney, continue to follow us here at Mickey Blog. But, and uh, we'll see you again next week, every single Friday, by the way. Yeah. That's when yes. our episodes drop every Friday. So you can check out a new episode next Friday. All right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, have a magical rest of your day. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Mickey Blog Podcast. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.